Look at all the brush down here. Look at the auto zoom. That's all brush on the bottom here. About two and a half, three feet of brush. I'm just gonna make a little move here, just find a little bit more of an opening where I just want, oh, right there. See how there's just a little bit less brush and there's some gaps in between the branches. That's what I'm looking for. I wanna be close, but not right in. But we're on Stump Lake today, which Stump Lake is a pretty good sized lake in its own right. In fact, ever since Devil's Lake overflowed into Stump Lake, it's now one of the deepest natural lakes in the entire state. But Pretty good sized chunk of water. And out here, you know, obviously this water is connected to Devil's Lake, but Stump Lake ultimately fishes entirely different than the rest of the bays. And a lot of times the key out here, the ticket, is find those trees, fish around that deep brush. A lot of times that's where you're gonna find perch on Stump Lake. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just love these fish. Just gorgeous. Here's a fish, he's coming up to it right now. It's a pretty good one. There you go. That's a decent fish. Decent fish, huh, Jason? Yeah, and, uh, that's dinner. So the pattern we're on today, we're, we're punching a lot of holes looking for trees. Name of the game is drilling a lot of holes, you guessed it, but once you find a piece of brush or tree or structure that these perch like to huddle around uh, a lot of times you'll drill eight ten holes right on top of that piece of structure and then you'll just go hole from hole i mean five feet can make a world of a difference uh, getting on just the right branch of those trees can make a bad day great well i got quite a bit of brush down in this hole here but had two three fish down on the bottom of the auto zoom and i just worked above them in a branch just about 10 inches above those fish and I watched the gap in the Vexlar fill up and just held her still and the fish bit pretty good actually. He hit pretty hard so hopefully there's a few more down there. Here we go. Here they're coming. There we go. Never get tired of that. But the best eating there is right there. You know, and so on Stump Lake, you know, you can find perch on the contours, you can find perch shallow or deep, but these brush piles in particular are pretty important. And so, you know, a lot of times you can just look along the old shoreline and just go up. You know, we're finding brush piles all the way out into 40 feet of water. But, you know, basically, you know, you either use aerial photography or use, you know, your auger and drill a lot of holes, but find those trees, find those brush piles and fish around them. It can be really amazing at times how many fish will hold in these brush piles. Here we go. <laughs> Look at that rod bend. Oh yeah. <laughs> Jumbo. Jumbo. Yeah, look at that. That's a better fish. Yeah, that's what we're here for. <laughs> I just love these fish. Yeah, just gorgeous. I just love how they get that, that helmet on the top of their head. Beautiful. Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by these industry leaders. Yeah, what's my favorite series of hubs? The Clam C Series shelters work best for us. Hey, what's our favorite ice sub shelter? The X Series from Clam Outdoors. <laughs> yeah. Choose the hub shelter that's right for you at Clam Outdoors. Pursue the ice. A Vexilar is responsible for more fish being caught than any other piece of equipment you could buy. You know what, fishing lures and gadgets have come and gone over the last 60 years. But Vexlar's mission statement has been true, helping anglers catch more fish. Vexlar is the gold standard in sonar performance and reliability in flasher sonar technology. Your ice fishing adventure begins and ends with a Vexlar by your side.
Happy 60th, Vexlar! Introducing the Rise Float Suit with Motion Float Technology. Breathable, waterproof, secure, and all the features that make the difference. Waterproof cell phone pocket, rapid drain system, and maximum flexibility. Fish with security in the Rise Float Suit from Ice Armor by Clam. Rise above. Clam Outdoors. Pursue the ice. See how that bottom's starting to flutter a little bit? Do the, got one close. I'm gonna try to pull him in here. There he comes. See him? Come, come, come. Just like that. See that bottom is just boiling with him. Good stuff. Here we go. You know, basically when you're fishing 40 feet of water, you know, you're keeping every fish you catch just because of the barrel trauma. And so, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna keep these fish and eat them up. Best eating there is, but just using a, just a small tungsten drop kick jig in that deep water. See that right there? We're just loading it up with wax worms. And that's the programming you can see up above the jig here. I'm just putting a tiny little swivel just to take out some twist. Just a mono leader, and then I'm just going to straight braid in this deeper water. Just makes the whole rod a lot more sensitive, and you just get better hook sets when you're in 40 feet or deeper. And on Stump Lake, a lot of times we are fishing deeper. Just the Devil's Lake Basin as a whole, a lot of times when we're perch fishing, you know, a lot of times we're in 30 feet of water or more. It's just a race to get down there. I can just see that bottom crawling with fish. Just trying to get back down there before I lose him. He's got a pile of fish down there. I'm only 10 feet away. I got some branches down here, but it doesn't seem to be any fish. And sometimes being that close will really pay dividends yeah, come when, right you're, in here. when you're on fish. The other thing too is you always have a line down there to keep them around. Oh, I was swinging a miss. And another thing with perch is when you have a school down there, if you can keep a bait in front of their faces, their attention will last much longer and you can catch a heck of a lot more of those fish. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of advantages to fishing with your friends when you're perch fishing, as far as finding them and keeping them around. No doubt. So Zach is a young kid that's really impressed me. You know, he's first started working for me, you know, guiding in the summer about five years ago. Obviously, you know, a lot of you that watch the show, you don't know that I guided on Devil's Lake for years and guided with the Perch Patrol. And so obviously I don't get a chance to do any guiding anymore, but I love to, you know, touch bases and connect. And, you know, whenever I'm home, you know, out fishing, a lot of times I run into these guys and, uh, you know, Obviously, we still have the camaraderie and the friendships, but uh, it's fun watching, you know, these young guys, next generation of guys kind of fill in and, and step up and, and just do a phenomenal job. And so Zach's one of those young anglers, just an astute angler, works really hard at it, just a really good stick. And, uh, you know, that's that's fun to watch, you know, a young single guy, not a, all he cares about, all he thinks about is fishing. And so I can relate to that. Yeah, there's a few of them down there too. Yeah, I just had one touch me again here too. Oh yeah, there you go. Slippery bugger. Nice fish here. Look at that, come right on up. Typically, 
over here on stump, the fish really like the trees because of the freshwater shrimp. The shrimp like to hold in those trees. So you drill enough holes, hop enough brush piles, find enough trees, and eventually you'll run across some fish. And it is typically better early ice, but as the winter goes on, these, these spots will reload. Um, there's, there's a pile of trees. Uh, this whole lake, just about every inch of the shoreline has got flooded timber on the old break lines. And it's all about drilling a lot of holes, finding the trees with fish, and uh, covering water. Another good eating fish. You know, so a lot of times when you're fishing Devil's Lake, you can anticipate a, a light bite in the sense that a lot of times we're just doing a really tight quiver, maybe a high lift to bring fish in. But once you get fish up, you know, a lot of times, you know, you might only be able to get these fish to come up maybe a foot, two feet up off the bottom. If you can get these fish to race up four or five, six feet off the bottom, obviously you have a lot more aggressive bite. But a lot of times you can almost anticipate, you know, just a, what we call a brain surgery bite where you just get these fish to come up maybe a foot off the bottom. And a lot of times you're just quivering it and just holding it almost still where you just jig to bring the fish in. And then and almost turn your presentation into a dead stick where you're just holding it and we're just watching that tip, just watching for the lightest bite. And that's why these meat sticks and dead meat series have been so popular. You have that, that heavy backbone for deep water, which is important, but you just have that light tip. And a lot of times you're just barely quivering it or just barely holding it. And you'll just see that tip just dunk ever so lightly. If you even imagine a bite, set the hook. But in that deep water, light biting fish, you know, that can be really important. Got him? All right. That sound never gets old, does it, when you set the hook on a no. perch? Oh. Gotta love the double still. Oh yeah, there's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, as far as fun goes, limit a perch in 25 minutes. I don't know if you can beat that. No, I agree. <laughs> that, that is too much fun. It's chaotic. Oh man. Chaos. Go, 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 go. Gobbing up a bunch of wax worms on there. Make sure my knot's good. Back in the saddle. Worms on there. Seems to be the bait of choice today. So a lot of times when you're pole hopping for perch, I like to use clam rattling blade spoon right away. Something a little bigger, get their attention down there right away. Seems to draw in fish out of these branches a little bit faster than the tungsten jigs will, but once you get a few fish down there in a hole that don't seem to want that spoon, it's, it's handy to have another rod close to you with a tungsten jig tied up on there. Get down there and sometimes you get these little bit finickier fish to go. You know, there's a lot of different presentations and lures that'll work on Devil's Lake. You can use spoons, you can use droppers below spoons to call fish in. You know, you can use some bigger aggressive presentations to find fish. But a lot of times if it's an off bite and just to catch numbers of fish, you know, I tell you what, we're using a lot of just small tungsten jigs. And the reason that tungsten 
can be so effective out in this deeper water, just it's denser than lead, and so you can use that small profile and just drops through, cuts through water faster. And so when you're using really small, tiny profiles, definitely use tungsten because it's gonna, your, your presentation is gonna feel more sensitive as far as detecting the bite, but it's also gonna get back down to the fish faster. And so you're not wasting as much time. So when you're 40 feet of water, tungsten can be a big, big advantage. And one of my favorite tungsten jigs for this deep water is this that Clam Pro Tackle Drop Kick Jig. And basically what I love about this tungsten jig is it has a long shank hook on it. The reason I like that is because I can I can stack up or wad up quite a few waxworms or maggots or spikes on there. So that way, if you know if you miss a fish, you still have something on your hook. I can gob up three or four waxworms on that presentation versus a short wide gap hook. You know, you just can't fit as much meat on the hook. And so long shank tungsten jig can work really good in this deep water. And just, you know, wad up three, four waxworms on there just so you always have some meat on the presentation. And usually most days out on Devil's Lake for perch, you know, waxworms, minnowheads, some perch eye, some type of meat will usually outfish soft plastics. And I think the reason that is, is that a lot of times these fish are very, they're almost like they're lethargic where they just come up and you almost have to just dead stick and they just come up and they just nose at it. They just taste it and then before they suck it in. And, you know, obviously with live bait, you know, they're going to, they're going to eat that presentation much better than soft plastics when it's just hanging still. Oh yeah, here comes one. Come on, eat it. Eat it. Oh, there he is. Oh, that's a good one here. Oh yeah. This is a good one. Here she comes, oh yeah. <laughs> that is cool, huh? Something took a bite out of her. Yeah, just a gorgeous fish. God, it never gets old. <laughs> I'm just kind of see in that fish's mouth here. Look at all these freshwater shrimp. I mean, you just see the fish is just choking on them, but there's a little bug that these fish are feeding on. Look at that, just... Never get tired of that. Never get tired of eating them and never get tired of catching them. Oh yeah. Dinner is served. <laughs> Oh, just a great day. You know, we've got probably pretty close to a limit here. And obviously, you know, you fish and, you know, basically anything over 30 feet, it's basically catch and keep. But, you know, I tell you what, perch, as good of eating as they are, and the fact that they, you know, they reproduce, and I mean, they're just a perfect fish to eat. And so, just a great way to wrap up a day, great day of fishing. And at the end of it all, a great meal. Doesn't get better than that. That's why people are out here. Absolutely. Hard to beat good fishing. <laughs>